If you're a developer looking to get started with AI, it's actually much easier than you might think. And in the next few minutes, I'll show you how you can actually build applications with AI models. Think summarizers, agentic apps, and more. And even use your own enterprise data. Whether you're using Java, Python, or whatever your favorite language may be, we'll show you how you can run models as a service from your existing infrastructure like a laptop, totally local and private. Let's actually check out this recording now and see what this AI application can do. So I've uploaded the recording that we just took. And just like this, our application that's powered by AI is able to transcribe that recording. We're living in a great time right now as developers because just recently to work with models and LLM required deep data science or ML expertise. But now it's easier than ever to run models as services, essentially being able to query a model just like a REST API, the same way that we've been working with services already. You might have even tried this out with popular large language models in the cloud, but what if I told you it can all be done from your own computer, even without a GPU? So let's get into it, first by understanding your particular use case, because odds are that there's already a model that can help with your particular situation in various modalities or mediums of data. What you should know is that different models have different strengths. For example, large language models trained on vast amounts of data can recognize patterns and work best as librarians to work with way more data than a human could ever try and process. And there's various types of natural language processing capabilities, computer vision, and much more. For example, image models can identify trends and details in video and images to classify and process bulk data, and audio and many more modalities can cover these different types of data sources. The possibilities are so vast, but it's all about automating and aiding these different types of repetitive tasks so at the end result, we can focus on what really matters. Now, to show you this practically on my machine, I'm going to demonstrate these different types of AI-enabled applications. We say AI-enabled because there's both an AI model running as a service and a traditional chatbot to handle user input and output, both separate workloads but communicating with each other, similar to how we architect these multi-tier applications already. And what I have here is Podman Desktop, and Podman Desktop allows us to work with containers and Kubernetes, but at the same time, AI models with the Podman AI Lab extension. So regardless of the underlying hardware, I can start working with minimal setup. So let's test out a basic summarizer. We're gonna go ahead and start this recipe, which contains a couple different details. For example, the model, but also the source code for the application and the serving runtime for that model as well. Now, we're gonna check out the source code here in a second, but what we're gonna do is select the model we wanna use, for example, the Granite 3.1 LLM with 8 billion parameters and run it as a service on my local machine. So there's no need for custom hardware or cloud access. If we actually go to check out the front end, well, we're gonna see that this is a simple front end with Streamlit, a Python library that's going to allow us to start uploading various types of files. For example, I have a file here, which is an enterprise document, and we're gonna provide this to the application to start processing and summarizing. So that's pretty cool. Now let's go behind the scenes because what we're doing is using Langchain, which is a popular framework for connecting to these models, making it super easy to integrate models like this one running on localhost into my actual application. But let me come back to the actual model itself. So this one specifically is running, of course, on localhost, but as a service. So it's compressed in what's known as quantization, allowing us to be able to run it on a machine with limited resources. And we can even inspect the API's Swagger interface so that we can make post requests and uh, REST API calls to this actual model, which is pretty cool. That allows me to be able to work in this inner loop of development, being able to build, run, and test my applications with a model that's also running as an API before it moves on to other stages on the path to production. So summarizers, chatbots, code generation. Well, what about when you want to work with your enterprise or personal data? What if we could just provide the relevant information to a question from databases and content that we already have to a model? So imagine you have a customer support chatbot and you could just provide information from product documentation instead of training a new model itself. Now, this is what's known as RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. And by using one of these recipes for RAG or GraphRAG, 
we can start this application and start doing question and answers over our data. For example, an insurance company could use this to ask questions about their customer claims and be able to pull information from data sources like PDFs and more. That's pretty neat. But what's important for you as a developer is understanding that these open source models can run locally on your machine at no cost with peace of mind about the data that you're using not going anywhere. And in the variety of popular languages that are out there today, it's easier than ever to integrate these models into your applications. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and let us know in the comments what you'd like to learn next. The open source AI community is flourishing and I'm super optimistic about the future of open source models and frameworks to build applications that really make an impact. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and have a great day.